ارزونا ارزونا للمنى حبرنا هو المجد للولى up when they got to the end and then there are those who feel like they didn't do anything in this month and that they have a long way to go there's a culture in our community of spiritual dependency syndrome spiritual dependency syndrome that gets highlighted in this month of Ramadan where if you don't have certain voice leading and you don't get certain effect in salah that you feel like you're not actually having the Ramadan experience if you're not crying and other people are crying and if you don't know the arabic and you don't know where we're at in the Quran you start to feel like you're not really into the experience and that's that that spiritual dependency that kind of sets in but ramadan is not about being attached to the imam that's leading you it's not about being attached to seeing your friends and talking with people and having a good time and joking and laughing while your heart gets harder this is not the time for that there's another 11 months out of the year where you can have a great time with that ramadan is the time where those who sweat in times of peace will not bleed in times of war Yeah, I remember we said the other day. You remember Ahmad? A warrior in a garden is not like a gardener in a war. You know what I'm saying, Ahmad? We see a lot of young memorizers of the Quran here, a lot of students of knowledge here, a lot of our our uh, young people with gray hair here. and shaitan is about to get unchained this is not the time for you to become spiritually dependent so now ask yourself how do i become spiritually independent in the month of ramadan so that i can keep this same energy outside of ramadan wallahi you're tasting the key right now you have it in your hand it's qiyam al layl it's praying at night the defeats of the umma that we see during the day comes from us getting defeated by our sheets every single night and the iman high that you feel getting up driving from wherever you came from to come here is from praying at night ibn umar from the verses of surah al-muzammil from verse uh, 1 to 7 he mentioned that tahajjud was the first obligation Allah had enjoined upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam When you look at all of the ulama all of the mujaddidin all of the shuhada the people who died in the path of Allah tell me one who didn't pray qiyam Tell me one imam a fiqh one of the imams of the madhahib the four you know or the other five you don't tell me anyone who was a scholar at any level in any era Tell me anyone who revived and kept the ummah alive when it was on the verge of getting ready to die that didn't pray qiyam. Tell me one. I dare you. Just find one. You're never going to find a single one. The oceans of knowledge that you see amongst human beings who had prodigious hifz and remarkable knowledge. The Imam Bukhari's of the world Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari scholar by the age of 9 70,000 ahadith memorized with their asanid sat with over 1,000 shuyukh real hafiz qiraat and thousands of ahadith alim and authority by the age of 19 recognized how did he get sahih bukhari It took him 16 years to do it. Do you know when he started? When he was 16. And we start in our video game profiles and social media accounts and my clout Instagram and Finstagram and I start looking for marriage at 16. of istikharat for qiyam al-layl. No, but we only do istikhara when we have to move somewhere else, look for a job somewhere else or get married. and we wonder why the umma bleeds during the day do you think that the umma could be led astray by scholars who put their forehead down on the ground at night 
in an ummah that's consumed with personalities and the glitz and the glam and everything, do you think that our ummah would literally be in spiritual cardiac arrest if we had imams who had students that they taught to pray at night? Do you think that this would be the case? Even the barakah, some of you and me as students see, you memorize five manzumat and you probably never thought that you could do it in your life. Do you think that the barakah that you see in it could come from just your teacher praying at night? It's deep. Jafar ibn Zaid, one of the warriors that went to Kabul, which was in modern day Afghanistan, from amongst the early generations of the Muslims, when the borders were being expanded of the deen, he tells us about um, Ibn Aisham al Adawi, who was a, a famous warrior. And so he was known for his strength and his energy. And so Jafar, he sees Ibn Aisham go to like pray, like leave the encampment and go deep into the woods and to go pray. And he starts his tahajjud. And he's praying. And, you know, back in the day, Afghanistan used to have mountain lines and stuff. Now, they, if you Google the lines in Afghanistan, you're going to see they just have one left. They used to have lines and stuff out there. So lion comes out of the woods and starts. He, Jafar said when the lion roared, it scared me so much I climbed a tree. You're going to climb a tree against a cat? That's how you know he's scared. Logic turned off. <laughs> And so the lion goes to Jafar and starts circling around him, roaring like it was hungry while he's praying. And he said, Jafar did not flinch, did not move. He kept, or uh, Ibn Aisham, Al-Adawi, he kept praying. He did not stop. And when he went to Sajda, Jafar Ibn Zayd, he said, he's going to die. Go to Sajda with lion rolling around you while you're praying to Hajjud. And he finishes two raka'at and he teslims and he's sitting and the lion is right there in his face roaring. What do you think al Adawi turned to him and said? He said, go seek your provision somewhere else. He looked at the lion and said, go seek your risk somewhere else. I'm praying. The lion roared, Jafar said, the lion roared and walked away. You think this stuff is made up? You got brothers breaking their fast for exams. He's praying to Hatchet in front of a lion. You think the, heart, the hearts of your parents are hard? Have you tried softening it with some Qiyam? Oh, I can't memorize. Uh, who was I talking to yesterday or the other day? Well, you know, these days they blur together. It's not just the physical. It's you, Abdullah. It's not just the physical when it comes to hev and knowledge. The istighfar that you make, this contributes to how easy or how hard it is. The toba, you might need toba to grab this juz of Quran. In order to increase in knowledge, like you might have to make some tasbih. You might need to pray qiyam al to unlock this knowledge that you want. That might be the difference. It sometimes isn't like just between your two ears. You got to ask the one who is asking you every single night. Well, I should be ashamed. I should not have to convince you to pray to Hachid when you know Allah asks every night who's asking so I can give. Mu'amr from the Tabi'in, he went to the masjid to ask a question of Sulaiman at Tamimi. He goes into the masjid for, uh, and, you know, we just finished Surah, Surah Tahrim, so maybe the story will be relevant if Sheikh starts uh, Surah Al-Mulk, just to Barak. And uh, we heard the narration from Sunan about the Munqantirin, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. He said that the 1,000 ayat to get that qintar of hasanat is from Mulk to Nas. Just, that's for those who, if you know, you know. So... That's the 1,000 ayat Ibn Hajar al-Hafid Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani said. Anyways, sidetrack. We bring it back. Bars. 
He said, I went to talk to Suleyman at Tamimi. Muhammad, he said, I went to talk to him after the Salah. And so I uh, figured after Aisha, I just sit next to him because he stood to pray to Raka'at. So I'm sitting next to him and he starts reading Surah Al-Mulk. And he makes it to verse 27. Now, we're not the type of person that like to give talks just to say that we gave talks and stuff like this. Let, I need you to get me some hasanats in my bank account. Chapter 67, verse 27. Go look it up. Not now. I mean, you can now. But look it up when you're not here. Don't be the type of person that sits in a lecture and doesn't think about anything outside of it. God forbid you the type of person that says, oh, I went and it was a good talk. What would you hear about? Uh, it was lit. This is not a show. It's not a game. He's reading this verse. Yeah, see what the verse was. Maybe the English translation will break you when you understand it even. He said, I, he kept repeating it, so I went outside to wait for him to finish. And it started to get late. He didn't want sadaqah from his wife, so I just went home. I came back at Salat al-Fajr. At the Adhan of Fajr, I came and I found him in the same spot. He was reading the same verse. And we've turned the Quran into a song to be sang. We've turned the Quran into a book for children to preserve. Ikhwa, the key to the life of your heart. You have low iman, you're struggling with your risk, you want to get married. All of the solutions, they lie in Qiyam. Ramadan, the best 10 days. Look, what is the pillar of Islam? It's not the month of Ramadan. It definitely ain't iftar. It's fasting in Ramadan, right? But the best 10 days are not in the, in the days of fasting. They're in the nights with Laylatul Qadr. If you can capture the energy of 10 nights of prayer, this will be worth just if one of those nights is a thousand months. Ramadan becomes a training ground for you to keep this energy for 11 months. And the 11 months becomes a training ground for you to be ready for these 10 nights every year. <sighs> Maybe that didn't make sense, Talha. It makes sense. You want some coffee? No, sorry. So now you got to ask yourself, what if I can't pray Qiyam? Hassan al-Basri, he told you why you can't pray Qiyam. It's your sins, they shackle you to your bed. Qiyam al-Layl, Tahajjid, is the school the Sahaba all graduated from. No degree for that. The degree for that is seen in the actions that Allah preserved from them. It's the caravan of the mutaqeen. Not everybody can taste this tijara. It's not business that everyone can engage in. It's for the elite. This halal black card, we're not talking about nothing with riba. So yeah, your sins can keep you from getting up. So what does that mean you need to do? Oh, I'm sick. No, that means you need some istighfar in your system. And some tawbah in your system so that you can get up. And what if you keep doing it and you still can't get up? Then don't wait until you have to wake up to pray it. Then just pray it after Aisha. And don't be delaying Aisha until 2 o'clock in the morning fatwa shopping for if it's the halfway of the point of the night until Fajr. Looking for these excuses, playing games with the religion of Allah. And what if you can't do that? Pray duha. You got a nice big window from after sunrise until before dhuhr. But what if you can't do that? Then you better pray for that. You better spend some dua on asking Allah to help you get up and pray qiyam. Because the salvation of yourself and your families, this is the key right here. I don't want to keep going on a tangent about this. Allah knows I could talk about this for at least three hours, and I might do that before Ramadan is out. Abu Hamdun, help me out with that, inshallah. May Allah help us pray qiyam al this is, get, this is the spiritual independence you should seek from this. Last thing I will say, and then we bring Sheikh back. I hope his coffee is good. You know, he's very particular about it. Allah preserve him. I mean. This month is about amassing secrets between you and Allah. 
this is not the month for showing off every every little thing that you're doing and where you're going and how you're doing it and talking and playing and joking and laughing like it's okay for you to see your friends and to sit with them and talk but but this is the time to amass secrets between you and Allah use these last few days to just put some secrets between you and Allah inshallah Allah help us amen سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك والسلام عليكم ارزونا ارزونا للمنى حضرنا هو المجد للولى